locked in a tight race atop a loaded AFC North, and they face off against each other this Sunday. Miles Garrett will take on the Steelers for the first time since he was suspended for swinging his helmet and hitting Pittsburgh backup QB Mason Rudolph over the head with it last season. So, Mike, if you were still playing for the Steelers, would you have any lingering animosity about what Garrett did to Mason Rudolph? Um, to a certain extent, uh, you know, Mason Rudolph, you know, was a young guy. And I think Miles Garrett, he sensed that, he knew that, and, and he took advantage of his opportunities in the game. But that was Big Ben. That would have never happened. He would have never tried Big Ben like that. And if that was the case, then, yes, the guys and probably that entire locker room would be out for Miles Garrett. But I think in this case, you got to be the, the consummate pro. Let the let the bike guys be bike guys. It happened last year. That was 2019. This is 2020. And I will say this though, you know, at the end of the day, they won't forget about what happened because one of their their own was disrespected. So I can see them in protection. You know, having the back chip Miles Garrett on the way out, thump him a little bit. Shannon, you know about that in terms of protection when you got to get the back out when the guy can be disruptive on the edge. Give him a little something. Give him a little nudge over there and let him know, look, it's not going to be that type of day for you. So I can see them putting the game plan together, you know, to take Miles Garrett totally out of it, chip him and thump him, you know, uh, slow him down in protection and do it in between the lines, you know, instead of outside of the lines where, you know, there is no real malice. But in, at, at the end of the day, in, in, in the game, you know, in, in between the lines, you know, you can do it legally. So... Uh, Miles Garrett got to look out, man, because those guys haven't forgot about what happened last year. It was very disrespectful, so he'll have to keep his head on the swivel for sure. Mm. I think the thing is, you're not going to forget about it, Skip, Mm. but I got to do everything I possibly can. I got to neutralize this guy. He's turning into that Aaron Donald. Skip, the guy that you cover, the Reggie Wise, the Bruce Smith, that guys that if you do not put your game plan in, to neutralize this guy, he'll wreck your entire offense. He has six sacks, which is second to Donald. Three forced fumbles tied for the most. Ten QB hits, 10, uh, 18 QB oh, pressures. He's, he's been dominant. He's been, yeah. Every game, mm-hmm. you cut the tape on, you say that's the best player on the field right there. Yep. And you got to find a way to neutralize him. You can't go out there, I'm going to get him, I'm going to get him. And then he goes right, blows right by you and drills your quarterback in the back. The ball is on the turf. Skip, look. There have been times and I, you know, that you, you go into a game and you understand the guy. And like Mike said, Mike, Mike would put me in toss crack motion. Mm. I would crack the guy. Because mm-hmm. I want him to think, I just don't want you just flying up field thinking you're just going to go pin your ears back and go get my quarterback. That's not going to happen because you never know where I'm coming from. But I'm not trying to do anything dirty. I'm not trying to injure no man. Trying to, but I am trying to let him know, you just thinking you're just going to speed off the edge and go get the quarterback, bro, that ain't happening today. Mm. Just so you know, that's not happening today. Skip, I'm not trying to get all back. and Because you get back with word about, man, I got to get him. I got to get him. And the next thing you know, Big Ben picking himself up off the turf. Yep. They realize what he did. But they're going to go out there and try to win this game. Yep. Because they got, you do realize, like, Cleveland's undefeated. They lost one game. Baltimore has lost one game. This is going to be a very highly contested division this got year, it. Skip. So yep. every game is going to matter. This yep. is not the NFC East where you can lose three or four games and still win the division. You lose two or three games in this division, Skip, you're probably going to be the wild card. Yep, I got you. I find what both of you just said fascinating. And I want to remind everybody exactly what went down last November 14th. It was a Thursday night game. The Browns were winning the game 21-7 in Cleveland against the Steelers, obviously backup quarterback Mason Rudolph. It's the last play of the game. It's third and 29 from the 17-yard line. Mason Rudolph has flipped the ball on a little swing pass to the back just to end the game. Right. And Miles Garrett comes completely unblocked right. and blasts him to the turf and rubs it in by kind of rolling over on him. Okay, that's great. But Mason Rudolph, to his credit, he fights back a little bit underneath him. And Miles Garrett ends up pulling his helmet completely off his head and then cracking him on top of the head with it in a way that could have killed him. And I'm not exaggerating that. It could have killed him. It hit him a little sideways, a glancing blow, or it could have killed him. And Mason Rudolph was going back at him, and it went completely out of control, and everybody's shoving everybody, and he is suspended for the last six games of the year. Correct. Okay, now comes the big plot twist that I want to ask both of you about. Mm -hmm. 
It took all the way until February 14th for Miles Garrett to tell ESPN he called me not only the N-word, he called me sorry N-word right. when they were on the ground when he was rolling on top yeah. of him. That Mason Rudolph called Miles Garrett a sorry N-word. The, the ex-GM John Dorsey backed him up a couple of days later and right. said, yes, he, he did. did tell me that after the game. Even Freddie K. Okay, and mm. Freddie K. But you and I talked about right. it the next morning. Why wouldn't he just go right in and tell right. every teammate in the locker room, yes. you won't believe what he called me? Right. Wouldn't you have gone? I yeah, think absolutely. you would have, yeah. right? And I would have reacted just like uh, yeah. Miles. And that's what was so surprising, Skip. I'm like, why is this dude reacting like this? Yeah. On a, I mean, okay, the game's over. You take him down. I'm like, why is Miles Garrett reacting like this right okay does that mitigate the circumstances Does that sort of undercut whatever animosity as a stealer you might feel toward miles garrett was it undercut mitigated somewhat by the the uh at oh, least the if, what the it, allegation of the n-word well if he said that and my miles garrett should have miles garrett should and if i'm miles miles here's the thing skip miles garrett said he said it so I'm not. I, I wasn't there, and I don't know if he said it. And like I said, NFL said they could find no cooperation. No, they, they did say that. They, That's correct. But let me tell you what Miles Garrett. Every chance he gets. That's a two. Ben Roethlisberger is number seven. Yep. He's looking at Ben Roethlisberger like Miles Garrett. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get all you back. Okay. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay all you back. Y'all physically, I'm gonna pay all you back. So, so now you're saying the lingering animosity would be on Miles Garrett's Absolutely. side. Yep. Okay, Michael yeah. Vick. What do you think? Well, now that, you know, I know more of the, the actual facts and, um, you know, I, I didn't know that that took place. Now, you know, I could see Miles Garrett having more animosity coming into this game. But, you know, I want to send a message out there to all the quarterbacks. Before you go trying to uh, a 6'5", six, six, <laughs> 265 defensive end, yep. a defensive back who is probably one of the strongest people on the, on, on the defensive side of the ball, linebackers don't do it don't do it just, just stay to yourself play your game you can't i i tried chris jenkins one time yeah. and i found myself flat on my back mm. i thought i was one of the toughest guys on the field i was talking trash and i found myself in a position like mason rudolph mm. just shut up and play the game don't try those guys you can't handle them you can't beat them no nope. you're gonna get whipped every time <laughs> keep your head in the game and play quarterback jesus that's it. Just and that. by the way, wasn't Chris Jenkins That's about it. three, three fifty? I G. thought I could get him, Skip. <laughs> I mm. thought I could get him. I thought because I came from New Benews, Virginia, that I had <laughs> some memory. I, I tried bad, to turn up idea. and got turned down. That what sure. I That's a whole different weight class. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even DBs. I tried to DB once and got whipped. I'm done. I was done. <laughs> Hey, man, first of all, I don't even, the quarterback shouldn't talk because you're in the most vulnerable position, Skip. You throwing yeah. the ball with your, you looking downfield, and that guy can come put his helmet in your back, in your chin, in, in your, bro. You in the, stop talking. Just yeah. do, hey, talk by throwing touchdowns. Do like Brady and Manny used to do. Just throw touchdowns and just <laughs> keep it moving. I once saw Roger Staubach take somebody on, but it was the backup quarterback, Clint Longley, and he KO'd him, knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, he won that one. Yep, he won yeah, that one. Yeah, if y'all quarterback to quarterback, yeah, okay, that that's fine. Because yeah. that's what happens, Skip. That's normally how the goalies do it in, in hockey. Yep. What the goalies? They go seek out each other. They do. <laughs> so yeah. quarterback, y'all go to tussle. Quarterback on kick, quarterback on punter. Yeah. Aaron go. Rodgers and Brady, that's okay, y'all go have a little wrestling match. <laughs> but leave the other guys alone. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Way to us. go, Mike.